Hello, I'm Rachel Carroll, President and Managing Partner at Edison. Acute vertigo and its associated symptoms can be a huge problem with an aging population. The company I'm speaking today just announced important interim phase two data on its LEAD program, which could potentially disrupt the standard of care in a $450 million industry. Our valuation of over $100 million for a stock trading significantly less suggests there is plenty of room to grow. I'm delighted to be speaking today with Thomas Meyer, who's the CEO of NASDAQ listed Oris Medical. Thomas, perhaps you could begin with a brief introduction to Oris Medical and the Lee compound component in your drugs, Betahistin, which is well known in Europe, why it's important and what indications you're targeting. Hi, Rachel. Uh, it is a uh... Indeed, a very interesting uh, program uh, that we have, intranasal betahistine. Betahistine is not exactly a household uh, name here, um, especially not in the US worldwide. Uh, this is a drug that has been around for several decades. And in fact, in many countries around the world, it is used uh, today uh, to treat vertigo, acute balance problems, and uh, well, in the US, it uh, uh, is no longer on the market. So the problem or the main challenge uh, with beta histine um, has always been that uh, its efficacy is a little bit, can be mixed. Um, and the reason for that is very simple. So when you take it as a tablet, and this is the current form that is available, uh, then very little uh, of the drug actually makes it into the blood circulation. So about one or 2% only. And uh, we have developed a nasal spray uh, with which you can uh, uh, get much more into the blood circulation. So we are talking here about five to 29 times more that we observed in um, a study in healthy volunteers. So um, our goal here is actually to um, get um, part of the uh, existing market for oral betahistine, which is about $450 million worldwide, and to bring um, betahistine with the nasal spray uh, to the US. We have um, a program that is called 125, AM125, that is for the treatment of uh, vertigo. We have also started here uh, working on uh, different additional indications. Uh, the first one is uh, called AM201, and that is for the prevention of antipsychotic induced weight gain. Fantastic. So let's get to the heart of today's interview. So you just announced really exciting interim data from your phase two traverse study for acute vertigo. Could you please tell us a little bit more about the study, what the data means and next steps for the clinical trial? We have indeed uh, seen uh, some quite interesting uh, results here from an interim analysis in the ongoing phase two trial with uh, intranasal uh, betahistine for the treatment of acute vertigo. So here we are enrolling patients um, who undergo uh, surgery, neurosurgery, and uh, after the surgery, they're unable to walk or stand. So they have acute uh, balance problems, acute vertigo, and uh, we treat them uh, for four weeks uh, with uh, the spray, which contains either betahistine or placebo. We do a lot of uh, a testing that is a primarily balance tests. And uh, think of, uh, 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 for example, uh, placing your, your feet on a, piece of foam, so it's a soft surface. You cross your arms, you close your eyes, and then you try to maintain balance here for up to 30 seconds. So the patients here after the surgery, it's usually zero seconds. And of course, they uh, would all like to get back their a sense of balance. The faster, the better. So here, uh, in the interim analysis, uh, we um, obtained results that show a dose-dependent effect. So the higher uh, we went, the more of an improvement uh, we saw over placebo. And uh, 
we could also uh, see here improvement on various um, of these tests. So this all looks uh, uh, very consistent. Uh, it looks uh, very encouraging. And uh, it allowed us now to uh, pick uh, two doses, two active doses that will be tested in uh, the second part of the trial together with placebo. So this um, is now uh, going to start uh, shortly and uh, we expect uh, the trial to uh, complete uh, enrollment next year around at the end of uh, the first quarter. Well, COVID-19 uh, permit, uh, but uh, we're actually quite confident uh, that uh, we'll be able to uh, complete a trial in that time span. And since then, you followed up with news about a new nasal spray to protect against airborne pathogens and, and exciting preliminary data potentially on COVID-19. Could you talk about the new spray and the new subsidiary you've created to support its development? Yes, that's uh, indeed an exciting and interesting uh, project. Uh, so it all started uh, during uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, lockdown. So we... Uh, well, brainstormed a bit um, about uh, possibilities uh, to protect um, uh, people against airborne pathogens like viruses or bacteria or also allergens. And uh, given that uh, we have these uh, beta histine programs uh, ongoing, well, we have acquired, we have built up uh, uh, some expertise here in intranasal uh, delivery. Uh, so we uh, found here um, a formulation um, that is uh, uh, drug-free, uh, so it does not contain any active uh, substance. So this uh, should actually qualify as a medical device. And uh, with this uh, nasal spray, um, you, when you apply it, when you administer it, you can um, establish, you can build a thin a protective film on your nasal mucosa and help actually the, the mucosa, which is uh, the body's first line of defense against uh, those air, airborne pathogens or allergens. You can help actually the mucosa here to uh, defend itself. So this is to avoid contact here with uh, mucosal cells. And in addition, um, this, uh, composition also can bind or trap uh, those pathogens or allergens. So it should be here a dual action. And um, we have already um, observed here some quite interesting, intriguing uh, data uh, in vitro. Uh, so we tested in a, in a SARS uh, uh, coronavirus 2 assay and we found that after five minutes of uh, contact uh, of the main component of our formulation uh, with the virus, the uh, infectious uh, viral load was reduced by up to 99% depending on, on the concentration uh, that we used. So this is very, uh, very encouraging, uh, very exciting. And uh, so moving uh, forward here, well, we set up uh, a subsidiary called Altamira Medica, uh, which is uh, dedicated to developing this. Um, now, obviously here, this is uh, much different from um, drug uh, development. So as mentioned, it's a medical device. And uh, while we hope uh, to uh, get this uh, to the market uh, fairly rapidly, of course, uh, there is uh, still uh, quite some work ahead, but uh, we already made uh, quite some progress here. And um, well, there is uh, quite, quite a few things um, in the pipeline here in terms of news flow as uh, we will uh, go through the next few months in, into 2021. So we expect here to submit um, uh, AM301, this new nasal spray uh, sometime next year. That's great. Well, tremendously exciting and great momentum across all your different programs, Thomas. So congratulations. 
Could you briefly summarize what investors can look forward to in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so we have uh, quite a few exciting uh, uh, things ahead coming up. Uh, so as already uh, mentioned uh, here, we have the second uh, part of our uh, Vertigo trial uh, that is uh, uh, going to complete enrollment um, in Q1. So we expect data uh, for Q2 uh, next year. Uh, we will have um, also uh, some uh, data, um, additional data here to file for an IND for intranasal uh, beta histine. Then we have uh, the program uh, AM301, uh, so the nasal spray uh, for protection against um, pathogens and allergens. As uh, I already said, uh, there will be quite some news flow here as we will test this with additional viruses, with additional allergens. There will also be some uh, clinical uh, trials. Well, smaller ones, shorter ones, as mentioned, uh, this is not a drug uh, development project. And uh, we also have here, um, not to forget, also uh, some latest stage assets uh, uh, called AM101 and AM111. Um, in tinnitus and hearing loss. Here, um, our strategy is, uh, well, to seek partnering uh, to move these uh, programs forward. Uh, we uh, see an attractive uh, potential for both of them. We set up uh, a subsidiary, a dedicated subsidiary called Silentin um, to facilitate uh, partnering. So here, well, we look forward uh, to making also some further progress. So all in all, uh, it's going to be an exciting time for Oris Medical. So a lot to look forward to. Thomas Meyer, thank you very much.